Hello and welcome back to another episode of Gaming the System, the podcast where three intersectional feminists examine gaming and games through a feminist lens. I'm your host for today, I'm Jem, and I'm here with my friends Alex and Matt. So before we get started, if you want to support us, you can subscribe to our patron at patreon.com forward slash gaming the system for some exclusive content, or you can send us a one-off donation via PayPal to our email address, wearegamingthesystem at gmail.com. Today we are talking about gaming addiction um, and also about primarily about the responsibilities of games companies uh, to gamers and their mental health really I suppose is, is the broader the broader topic today. Um, so uh, before we kick off with that i just wanted to see how you guys are getting on with your gaming and what 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 have, what has been going on in your gaming worlds over the last um few weeks well i've um decided to jump back onto assassin's creed syndicate um just because i just lo- really love the music of the um because it's by austin wintry who's one of my favorite game composers and uh, i just felt like going back into victorian london and messing about and then I realised of course that my saves for it are probably somewhere in the cloud as part of PS Plus or on my PS4 and so I had to restart the game from scratch because it's on my PS5 Um, but I don't mind doing that so I'm just kind of reworking my way through the story and and just enjoying um, I can't remember how old it is now I think it came out in 2015 it's quite it's quite uh, surprising how quickly time flies um, but it's one of my favourite Assassin's Creed games. It's got a slightly more linear style compared to the more recent entries where you could still sort of play around um, in the main missions with how you carried out the assassinations and there were some sort of scripted ones where you could get extra cut scenes for doing it a certain way or fulfilling certain objectives, which is really fun. Um, like there were ones with the Tower of London uh, where you could go and steal a yeoman's key and things like that um, and it's just really cool I just really like the world that they built for Victorian London so I've very, been very much enjoying that yeah awesome what about you Matt yeah so I've just finished the Talos Principle uh-huh. 2 and it's a bloody masterpiece absolutely and it was only £25 and it just it's a £50 uh, like quality of content and amount of content sort of game so I can't recommend that enough for puzzle people um, and it's all uh, brutalist architecture um, covered with um, just verdant nature and that's that's just one of my favourite art styles um, and then alongside that I was playing the second Witcher game mm-hmm. which I've been trying to play forever but I finally got a laptop that's capable of doing it um, and they're just so good. Just CD Projekt Red are really good at what they do, and it just it was nice to look back and go, oh yeah, they they've always been good at this. Um, and so now I'm starting The Witcher Three again. Um, and so yeah, fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, well, I have really major news. I finished Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Finally, Baldur's Gate Three. Congrats. Done. Um, I started in August last uh-huh. year, so it's what, uh, six, seven months, eight months? Anyway, mm-hmm. long time, ages. I did have some breaks in the middle, um, but I I think I've clocked up well over 200 hours yeah. on, on it. It's a bit crazy. Um, I was really thorough, and I like talked to everyone, looked in every single box. <laughs> so, you know, I think I've basically, like, yeah explored a lot of the game but i haven't i know that i haven't done all of it i know mm. there's still there's bits that i miss there's a, a whole quest there's at least two big quests that i didn't do so um i gave myself a couple of days and i let um uh, my husband finished playing his his solo playthrough and mm. then last night we kicked off again um and uh, but this time we're playing origin characters so um i went for will 
uh-huh. because I didn't use Will very much in in my game. My mostly my party mostly consisted of me. I was a a, a moon druid, and then um, Shadowheart, Gale, and Astarian. Um, and um, so I didn't really play a lot of Will, and so I was intrigued to see the game from his perspective. Um, and also he does a sort of um, he does a sort of warlocky mm. magic. So I thought that might be quite interesting. And Daniel is going with uh, Gail um, because he didn't have Gail in his party. So so yeah, it's been quite interesting. We just literally just started and died almost instantly in the first fight because we've gone up a level of difficulty. Oh. But we, um, so we've gone for tactician. Tactician. Oh, I want to say taciturn. Tactician. Um, yeah, and we went, so we've gone for that, which is supposedly like a little bit different, a mm. little bit harder. Um, but it was seemed to be quite a lot harder. But, you know, I think it's difficult because when you're used to running around with like 100 plus mm. health and suddenly you're running around with 10, it's you have a whole, di- it's a whole different perspective. And I think yeah. because we're so um, um, gung-ho, you just run into it thinking like, oh yeah, it's going to be fine. <laughs> and, then, and, then you, and then you get killed by like, you know, a little... A little imp or something <laughs> so it's it's um humbling wow. so yeah but good good right so on to today's topic which um yeah i suppose is is not a million miles away from like my you know my experience of um with playing Baldur's Gate and just thinking about it when I'm not playing it and all of that um is but the inspiration for today's topic was an article that came out um on the 27th of March um on PC Gamer and it just popped up on my feed I think or um and it just piqued my interest which the the headline is you can't sue us for making games too entertaining say major game developers in response to addiction lawsuits um and it goes on to explain that microsoft rockstar epic and other uh companies are being sued for using addictive psychological features in games and we're not talking about mobile games or um you know solitaire or other little sort of like um in-app purchase games and things like that that we would normally think about we're talking about things like minecraft uh grand theft auto 5 and um fortnite so the argument is that um in the in the in the lawsuit um that uh, an Arkansas woman has launched um, is uh, against uh, Roblox, Fortnite, Call of Duty and Minecraft. And um, they allege that um, these games are using addictive psychological features and um, basically hooked her son when he was 12, um, he's now 21, into these games, which has led to him dropping out of school, spending $350 a month on games and being diagnosed with um, depressive disorder and anxiety, uh, withdrawal symptoms when he stops playing the games like um, rage, anger, physical outbursts, et cetera, et cetera. And that that, um, the mum said that she was completely unable to regulate her son's gaming um, because she couldn't, deal with the resulting outbursts so you know all of this sounds a lot like um addiction symptoms that we know from other other um, substances and other experiences that people have in life and we know that there's a lot um relating to um, gambling addiction and there are obviously similarities with gaming addiction and gambling addiction and i'm just wondering like what do we what do we think about this what um what do we think about how these games 
might influence people in this way and what do we think about the responsibility of the um of the individual games companies um and to their responsibility their duty of care to their customers to to the players so um this is what we're going to talk about today it's quite a big topic obviously none of us are um experts in addiction or um you know gaming addiction or gambling addiction or any of these issues and we're certainly not um experts in law unless either of you have been secretly studying so you know all of this is just from a lay person's perspective and from a gaming perspective but you know this is a big topic it's a big issue and i think you know it fits right in with what we talk about a lot about the responsibilities of gaming companies to society so with all of that in mind um i want to ask you like do you actually believe in the in this idea of gaming addiction is it possible to get addicted to gaming i think it's possible to get addicted to um well i had to look up before i kind of grappled with that question in my head i thought i should look up what addiction actually means um because I wasn't 100% clear. So I had a search around and looked on the NHS website and actually on Mind, their mental health charity, um, their website for like their um, information on it. And basically an addiction is something that is used um, to kind of either as an escape away from something else that is, is causing issues in your life, like that you want to escape from or as kind of a, a, a method to de-stress after going through a, a tough day and it becomes habitual and then when that habit becomes a problem to the extent that everything else around you is not getting looked after like you're not looking after yourself you're not looking after other people you're not functioning in a in a quote unquote normal way and whatever it is that you're using to feel better is taken over your life that's when it becomes an addiction so really you could argue that anything it could be anything um because you know there's all sorts of different types of addictions the obvious ones people think of are things like gambling and alcohol and drugs um but there's also sex and you know any other type of i guess um vices yes suppose you would say um but yeah as an entertainment media i guess gaming there are elements of gambling in in gaming. I think definitely in mobile gaming. I know that's not what the lawsuit covers, but that's definitely something that's involved within gaming. Gaming's, gaming itself and games aren't inherently bad. They're not like a dangerous thing. Um, but I think when they are used in a way that creates this addictive, you know, like it's being used as as an addictive substance, as it were, then obviously then um, you need to examine what the root cause could be because the games themselves aren't the things that are the problem. Is that making sense? I don't know if I've worked it out in my head right, but that's kind of what I take away from it. And I don't know if that's 100% answering the question, but that's the conclusion I've come to. Yeah. Mm. So, so within the bounds of the of the um, definition that you've found, which mm. is really helpful, I think, do you do you feel that addiction is possible? The gaming addiction is is can be a problem. I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Mm. What about you, Matt? So, I'd like to deconstruct this um, lawsuit a little bit because. Uh, like I said, I'm not a lawyer or a doctor or anything, but I am a young man who has had severe experiences with mental illness. And everything that I read in this just reads that this, this, this child going into this young man is having a profoundly difficult time in his life. And my perspective on addiction is it's either you're either doing something to feel good, so it's like party drugs like um, uh, cocaine and gambling, you're doing it for the excitement. And uh, and then there are 
addictions where you're numbing pain, where sober life is so painful and terrifying that you can't bear the thought of existing in it. And so you turn to things like, say, heroin, for example, and alcoholism. They're things that numb your experience of the world. And so what my perspective of what this looks like is this child is having going through a very difficult time and doesn't have the tools to cope with it. And so he does the best he can, which is to um, immerse himself in games because then the world isn't as scary. You can feel safer in that. And I identify 100% with that, uh, the young man in this. Um, and the way to break people out of addiction, which is why it's so difficult, is you need to make sober life better or at least as good as what this addiction gives you so this this world of gaming gives safety and comfort and enjoyment and why wouldn't you want to spend all your time in that world if the world itself i, I don't know whether this is misogynist or not or whether this is or whatever the mum sounds like a nightmare <laughs> and the so I, I just looking looking for, so every, the lawsuit is wrong. It's just it it there's no leg to stand on it in in my opinion. In this, it feels like it's going in front of the Supreme Court. So whoever this mother is must have access to significant resources mm. in order to get a case all the way to the Supreme Court. Mm. To have three hundred and fifty dollars to be spent on, because you can you can cut off a child when someone's twelve and goes, oh, I spent three hundred and fifty pounds on the credit card. You go, Jesus Christ, and then take the credit card away, and then that's it. And then saying I can't deal with my child's outbursts, that's just not an acceptable a conclusion for a parent to take. The child is your responsibility. And it's your responsibility to raise them and to tell them no. And so it feels like this child is going through and has gone through a very difficult period, continues to do so. The mother is unequipped to deal with it. And instead of working out how to deal with it, she is turned to this great big broad stroke mm. where, where what this young man needs is is far more subtle and sophisticated than that mm. and this is just i couldn't think of anything worse than your mother going to the world and going my son's fucked up and it's not my fault he's a mess he's he's lazy and skinny and ill and addicted to games and it's not my fault I want the world to see it when you just need this is this is bad this is bad for everyone and it's wrong mm. one thing so, that also struck me sorry John when I was reading so, the um, article I don't think there was any mention of a father or a father figure and I think that might also I don't want to like be an armchair psychologist here but you wonder if that maybe if there was a lack of a male role model um, to help talk through things like any kind of mental health issues that he could have been going through or is going through, having that lack of a male role model might some also be contributing to the issues that are happening. Um, and I don't, again, I, and it might be... I don't think the mother's handling it very well at all. But yeah. And we just, if, 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 if we had the slightest glimpse of this life, it could be something happened to this um this young man when he was 12 something yeah. bad happened to him and that he so he might have been molested by someone happens all the time and then he might have been too scared to tell parents worried might tell parents people don't their children don't tell their parents things for a number of reasons they might be an, in, an intensely religious family 
then he might be gay. And the only way for him to... He, he can't... He can't people burying themselves in the closet like that is profoundly bad for their health and their, their, the family might have, the parents might have gotten divorced when they were 12 and that might have affected him terribly it's just all these things but this lawsuit is just it's completely wrong it completely misses the point and yeah, it just doesn't do anyone any good really apart from making uh, it's, it's it, when it comes to the question of gaming addiction, whether it's possible, is one of those things where it, it 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 people who think that can look at this and go, oh look, our fears are valid. My child spends too much in gaming, and it's not because I I don't give them boundaries or I don't understand them. It's too easy to use things like this, especially with children as a scapegoat for parents mm. who who don't who know that they're not giving their child what they needs but then this comes around to i've been wanting to talk to you both about this because thinking about parenthood recently and parenting is I think this is this will be a topic for a, for a, for another time, but but how how what the role of parent has evolved into now that you can't beat your children if a child is misbehaving, you can't beat them until they behave, and if your child has learning difficulties, you can't just say oh well you'll just work in a mine. You go no, I want your life to be the best it can, and so the nature of parenting is changing. And but whatever this is. It, it's it's just it's just bad for everyone. Mm. So, just so we know where we're where we're starting from. It, uh, do, do you think, Matt? Do you think that there is? Uh, I I completely take on board everything that you've said about this particular case. But do you think that the idea of of get gaming of being addicted to gaming is is possible or do you think that uh, it's it just it doesn't happen or it's un, very unlikely i don't think it's possible i think it's it can be overdone but it can be managed it's a thing that can be managed it's not like a chemical addiction because mm. if you try and stop you want to deal with the reason why you're gaming so much if you're gaming so much because you're loving it and you're having a great time and it's very fulfilling um there's no problem you can you can game like as much as you want mm -hmm. um if you're doing it to hide from things then sometimes it's a crutch that keeps you up so that you can manage enough to support yourself because what what uh my psychiatrists have told me uh, which i think is very wise is that it's the treatment for anything is time talk and tablets and so you need to find out what tablets you need you need to find someone to talk to to talk about the truth of your life and what you're experiencing that has nothing to do with your parents or your family that's really important it needs to be someone in a neutral place um, and then you just pass time until things get better. Mm. And gaming is the perfect way to pass time. And so the answer to can you game too much? Yes. But it depends on the reason for your gaming. And then they're just, it's, an, it's a holistic thing. Gaming is part of a, life, a lifestyle. And if you're having problems you need to look elsewhere gaming i think rarely causes problems unless you're spending too much money on something but you can always not spend as much money it is complex but it's more of a it's, it's impossible to go into it without deconstructing all of society mm. and um i don't think we've got time for that today not today but we are working our way through it all um i think it's really interesting actually because um i think that the to me what what's coming out from listening to to both of your um answers to that that question is that the the operative word is about problems you know when mm. it becomes a problem and 
lots of us use all sorts of things to get us through difficult times in our lives or to get us through bigger mental health challenges and you know, all of those things and and the there is there is a focus on sort of you shouldn't be doing that and i have a a a, a sort of uh, I refuse to use the word should or I try not to use the word should because should is such a, a laden word with with a whole bunch of stuff behind it. And I think whenever I think I should do that, I deliberately don't do it because, <laughs> on principle because I think that's the only way that I can push back against that, this idea that, you know, I should be doing this or I should be doing that or I shouldn't be doing this. Um, so I think there is, there is, uh, a lot of virtue signaling and a lot of, um, uh, ideas of how, how we should be living our lives, uh, that can be problematic and tells people that when they do things that are different from society and different from maybe the majority of people, that that is wrong. And I, I think that obviously one of the things that we talk a lot about here is is that just being different isn't wrong it's just different and different people have different ways of living their lives so I I've certainly gained considerably more than the average person at times in my life um, and I would not say that I had ever been addicted to gaming um, but I do think that I have been uh, reliant on gaming in um, at times in my life um, to the detriment of my of me of myself and my life. Uh, it's difficult to know how much ne how negative that could have been, because as you say, Matt, you know we use we use these things as as support structures, and if we didn't have those, what mm where would we be you know we it's, it's easy isn't it to look back and say oh well you know i wasted all that time gaming but if gaming actually saved your life then you know how mm. much is isn't that a a um a fair exchange you know i think that you can't it's so easy to just be flippant about these things or to uh, try and oversimplify them uh and i i think that that is absolutely a valid point. I do also think that I have experienced with my child these f rages and mm. anger and frustration when um, unable to access their games or their phone or other things that are to the point of um, obsession um important at various points and it as a parent it is extremely difficult to manage that and i i i agree with you matt i mean you know parents are the only people that can really do that and if and if not the parent then people that the parent brings in mm. to support them but it it can be really difficult to manage that when you have a child who is literally screaming as though the world has ended because you've taken away their access to a game or because the game has crashed or in one nightmarish 10 days because you know they've been banned from roblox <laughs> probably <laughs> fairly to be fair but um you know so there are times when it can be really really challenging and where as a parent or as a loved one looking at that person you're sort of like it's just a game come on you know like go watch tv or go play another game or all of these things my mum said that to me on occasion when i was younger and it was like a, it was like a lighting a fuse box that sentence it's just a game no it's not <laughs> you know it was yeah there, there'd be a number of times mum would say she would just completely you know block my access to games if she knew I was getting too angry about something and too worked up or I'd start swearing and you know that probably wasn't appropriate for my age at the time I was probably still in primary school um which again probably not okay um and but it got to the point where I was so angry that I'd start swearing and then mum be like nope you're coming off and she would immediately like shut it all down and and just remove me from the room and 
and say it's just a game and then I'd completely go off on one because I'd be so annoyed because you don't understand how important it is but um you know obviously now I look back and I'm like oh, of course it's just a game but you get so um I can't think of the word not engrossed it's more it's more than that it is almost obsessive isn't it mm. where you get sort of sucked into it and um when it doesn't go your way it can be very difficult to manage emotionally mm. um but yeah that I can definitely understand now f- looking back from my mum's point of view how difficult that might have been to to manage as well yeah mm. Mm. I mean sorry Matt go um part of the parenty thing um do you so women are always brought up your the your main goal in life is to have children so you get married you get pregnant you have a child you raise that child to 18 they go off to the world blah blah blah, blah, blah. um but it's infinitely infinitely unknown and random what you're gonna get from a child <laughs> Because for one thing, you don't know whether you're actually going to physically be able to have a child. You might go, oh, I'm pregnant, and then you might have a miscarriage. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't ready for that. Um, Or they could have any kind of disabilities or neurodiversity. You might be intensely religious, and they might be LGBT. Um, Did you feel before you had your child that you were prepared for... Do you not necessarily prepare that you had a full idea of what you would need to be able to do as a parent? Well, me. <laughs> yeah. As the only one with child. No, <laughs> no, I mean, actually, I, pro- <laughs> I've, I approached it very much like I'm only going to look at the next step. Because if I thought about how, how am I going to parent a teenager then I would never have had a child because the (laughs) idea was so daunting. Um, And certainly, I certainly was. I mean, I had a, I, I had a, a really lovely pregnancy. I didn't have any big, any big problems or anything. And I really enjoyed being pregnant, but I was extremely anxious about how I would parent because mm. it just did feel like such a big thing and I and I remember when I my daughter got to her first birthday and we had the first birthday party and I remember feeling like actually this was a celebration for me because I had kept her alive for a whole year <laughs> and I still feel like that now and I still sort of say to her like yay me I got you to 16 and um and obviously it's not just me there are many other people involved in that process but it yeah I mean it's <laughs> You can't go. You can't go into being a, a parent thinking that you know, even if it's your second or third or fourth child, because as you say, there are so many differences, and you don't know how what what your child is going to need. So yeah. And occasionally you get so I, so I listen to tons of true crime stuff, and the amount of kids who are just they're sociopaths, you're born a sociopath, you, you can't help that. And then there was this one guy who pretended he was going to college for four years. And then when it came, but he hadn't been, he'd just been taking the parents' money and just not doing anything. And then when it came time for him to graduate, he killed his parents because he couldn't, he couldn't bear the, the idea of them finally finding out that it was wrong. And apparently that's worryingly common oh, for kids pretending they're going to college. It is actually so, one of my fears, yeah. Matt. You're like hooking into one of my fears. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. like I'm, <laughs> I'm going to suddenly find out it's all a big con. And <laughs> I, my lovely daughter is not so lovely. She's actually the devil. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that is the thing with parenting.